And the second one is also 32 over 3. All right, so what is the difference between those two uh, integration problems? The second one is half. Okay, the second one is half the interval, and we multiply it by 2. Now, without picking up your calculator, what do you know about the function negative x squared plus 4? First of all, what shape is it? It's a parabola. Which way does it open? Down. Down. Because it's negative x squared, first of all. It's negative x squared. I don't know why people are talking right now, and I'm getting really upset. Even if you didn't know that, how about we use some calculus, right? Let's use some calculus. How can we determine concavity? Second derivative. What's the second derivative of this function? Negative 2. It's concave down. And guess what? Because it's negative x squared plus 4, it is symmetric about the x-axis. Okay? So that's why, and it actually it has x-intercepts at negative 2 and positive 2. That's why when we cut this interval in half, and multiply it by 2, we end up with the same value as the integral from negative 2 to 2 because um, this first one is obviously representing all this area. The second one is just representing this half, but it's symmetric. So if we calculate that half and multiply it by 2, it's symmetric. Okay, um, So that's a good property that we can use. That is an even function. Okay, That is an even um, Negative x squared plus 4 is an even function. Now, the two on the bottom don't really have much to do with each other except for the fact, what's the value of their integrals here? Both of them are 0. Okay. Um, what type of functions are those? They're odd functions. Okay. They are odd functions. Negative 2x goes through the origin. I didn't draw that very well. But it's a line that goes through the origin. So that's why its integral from negative 4 to positive 4 is 0 because you've got positive area right here and you have the exact amount of negative area canceling it out. The same thing happens with x cubed. You all know what x cubed looks like. It goes through the origin. It's symmetric, um, but it has rotational symmetry. Okay. Um, so from negative 3 to positive 3, you've got negative area and then positive area that cancel each other out. So you... Yes, it has rotational symmetry. If you rotated your paper completely upside down, it would look like the same function. Even functions are symmetric about the y-axis. You fold it and it's symmetric. Okay. Um, you could also, you could fold the odd functions, but you fold them along the line y equals x. And you do that on the... No, that's, that's not true. Ignore that. I don't know what I'm thinking of. Ignore what I just said. Rotational symmetry for the odd functions. Okay, so you need to know this because they will ask you questions like this um, on the exam, kind of like the table problems, kind of like the problems we just did last week with the A to B and B to C. Remember that kind of stuff? Um, if F is an even function, then the integral from negative A to positive A is equivalent to 2 times the integral from 0 to A, or you could also do negative A to 0. That would be the same difference. Um, if it's an odd function, then the integral from negative a to a is 0. You can't split that one up. You can just automatically say that it's 0. Um, some examples of even functions, um, obviously the one that we just had, cosine is a very common even function. 
and it looks a little weird that the way that I have these written, um, but anytime x squared, you're adding or subtracting a constant. Okay, if you throw that linear term, just the x term in there, it's not an even function anymore, but if it's just x squared and a constant, it is. If it's just the absolute value of x and a constant, it's an even function. Common odd functions, you've got sine, you've got tangent, x cubed, plus or minus any constant with an x, those are common odd functions as well.